Many authors believe that once you publish your book on Amazon, you should be good to go in having a good copyright. However, though, that's actually not the case. There are a couple of steps that authors need to take to ensure the legitimacy and the soundness of their book copyright claim. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that effectively and efficiently so that you have the best and the strongest rights for your book. But before I get into that, if you'd like to learn more about book marketing or a bit more into the legal aspects of publishing, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to the right. That way you get notified the next time one of my videos come out. And with that, let's begin. In order to legitimately create a copyright for your book, you must do three things. The first is creating copyright rights. The second is providing a copyright notice. And the third is registering a claim. Now the first one, creating a copyright right, is actually the easiest. This one happens the moment you start writing. That could be on your computer, papyrus, paper, notebook, whatever. You see, when your writing becomes fixed in a tangible medium, which is legal jargon for being converted from thought into a physical form, you have now created a copyright right. There's a digital signature on your Word document. There are all these ways that they can basically say, at this time and date, you created this. So cool, you probably already have step one done. Now, step two is making a copyright claim. This is what we call a copyright page. We've all seen them right at the front of the book. There it is, a whole bunch of legal jargon, et cetera, right? Well, in order to make step two legitimate, you just need three things. You need the copyright symbol. You know that little C, that little weird C with the like circle thing? You need the year that it was published and you need the name of the person or the publishing company that is filing the claim. That's really it. Now, sure, there's other stuff that you can put on a copyright page, and I definitely recommend that because there's other benefits to those. And if you'd like to learn more about what you should put on your copyright page, be sure to check the description below this video where I'll have a link to an article that I wrote all about the nuances to those. And you can find some great examples depending on whether you're fiction, romance, nonfiction, historical, etc. But the point is, at some point in your book, you need to make a strong claim that tells people that you have a copyright to it. And that's it. Okay. So we've done step one, we've written it. Done step two, we have a claim in our book. Step three, this one's the big one. This is the one that most authors miss and it's probably the most critical. And that's actually registering a claim with the US government. Now the good news is the US government actually has a website just for this and you can find the link below. But let's go ahead and jump on my computer and let me show you how you can effectively register your copyright in less than 15 minutes. Okay guys, clicking on the link that I have in the description, uh, will bring you to copyright.gov forward slash registration, this page you see before you. Now, first you'll either need to log in or to create a an account. So click here. And if you have your login, you'll want to put it in here. Otherwise, if you need to create one, you click here and you fill in your information. I'm going to go ahead and put it in mine since I have a account. Okay, and I'm just going to click login. And now this will bring me to my personal dashboard. Uh, if I had works that were already in here, you would see them listed and it would give information about each one. However, though, in this case, we need to register a work and this is a standard application. Now there are other types of applications, but I would say about 99.9% .9 of you that are authors will probably just wanna use this one and they even say it as well. Now at this point, uh, you can start registration. I'd recommend reading through, but ultimately this just gives you an overview of what you're about to embark on, the three steps to it, and some of the uh, reasons why this might not be the right kind for you. But in that case, we are gonna go ahead and start our registration. Now at this point, there are three things we need to do. We need to fill out this entire form down here. We then need to pay, which again, like I've said before, is $55 if we're doing this electronically submitting the work electronically or $85 if we're submitting the work through the snail mail. Okay. Now with that said, let's go ahead and look at some of the forms. A big part of type of work is for all of us, we're going to be doing a, a literary work. Okay. And we would check that we uh, confirm that this is a literary work. The next is listing the title. Okay. We'll hit continue. Next is the title. This is where you'd add the title of your work. The next part is talking about the publication and whether or not it has been published or you're working on it. This is where you would list the author or authors if there's more than one. 
Claimants, on the other hand, is different than authors because you as a publishing company may be the ones who own the work, but you're registering that this author was the one who wrote this. There's actually a nuance on how long your copyright will last, whether or not you are actually the author or whether or not you're publishing something somebody wrote for you. That's why this is very important. Now this area, you can limit the claim, okay? Now limiting the claim isn't like, oh man, I wanna choose to limit my own claim. But this is saying like, for example, maybe this is a revision or new work, or it's based upon something, or you're actually doing this using a public domain. The key is, is you're giving more information to give a bit more to the government about uh, what your work is on. Moving on, we have the rights and permission. So this is the contact information, either yourself if you wanna be contacted or the organization's information or even a person you want to represent you in case somebody goes to the copyright website and is trying to find you to ask permission to use your work or has information about your copyright claim. This is very important. So think of this as your the information you provide for people to reach out to you if they wanna talk about your claim. Now, correspondent, on the other hand, this is where the copyright office will contact you. So it's a big difference between rights and permission because you want to make sure to get this one right. Because if the copyright office has any questions, they're going to use the information you put here in order to contact you. Next is the actual location you want your certificate to be mailed at. Um, again, these things could all be different for legitimate reasons. That's why they have it in a separate step. Special handling is it's really going to come down to a small percentage of people. And I, I will admit this is not an area that I have a lot of experience on, nor could I speak uh, very highly on it, but usually I've always left this blank. And then finally the certifying, I certify that everything I put in here is correct. And then you can do a review submission. Now, once you've done that, you'll be able to click on pay and you'll be able to put in your credit card information to pay for this and move on to then submit your work. And just like that, you have now filed a claim with the US government. There you have it. As you can see, the process to copyright your book is pretty simple, but it's very important that you do all three things. Otherwise, your claim isn't as legitimate as it should be. This can hurt you in the long run. So keep that in mind in case you're on the fence on whether or not you should copyright your book. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And again, if you'd like to learn more about book marketing or see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.